What's up, y'all? Go ahead and get that Adobe Illustrator fired on up because today we are rocking and rolling with an amazing tutorial where I'm going to show you how to recreate the Shining logo from the alternative movie poster created by Tracy Ching. Now, she is an amazing artist and designer, and I want to give a shout out to her. This is basically from her poster, and we're just recreating it so that we can kind of learn some new techniques. You're going to learn how to work with type in Illustrator and create that 3D effect. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how to easily use one of the effects tool to create that mirror slash 3D multiple image look. So strap on in, we're in for an amazing ride. Let's go ahead and do this. First things first, you're gonna wanna create an artboard in Illustrator. It doesn't really matter so much, so I'm just picking the one of the already made ones for 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. But what I'm going to want to do first is just put in a nice little black background. And the easy way to do that is using your shape tool and then just creating a shape so that it goes over your artboard slash canvas. And now obviously I don't want the shape to move. So we're just going to basically lock it into place. So making sure that you're still selected on your shape, go to the layers panel. And then on that layer, I'm just using the drop down on that. And then I'm just going to click on the, the left there next to the eyeball and that will bring in the lock and now my layer is locked and won't move. And that's just an easy way to do a background really quickly. And from here, I'm just gonna be using the type tool by hitting T on the keyboard and then I'm just going to write out the shining. And then using the character panel, I'm just increasing the size so that we have something usable. And then on this particular logo, I'm just using the standard Tico font and you can use whatever font you want. You're going to want to use more of a condensed font so that it's a little bit, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but a little longer and uh, definitely sans serif. And then on the properties, I'm just using the color swatch in the property panel and I'm just swatching the color or switching the color over to white. And then if you haven't done so already, make the logo all caps. You can use the TT uh, quick key or just retype it using caps. And then you can quickly align the text by using the align tool. And then the only thing I'm doing here is making a duplicate. We're going to be doing this quite a lot throughout the tutorial. So all you got to do is use your hotkey by clicking alt or option, depending on if you're Mac or PC user, and then just dragging down. So make sure you're clicked on that original logo, alt, option, and drag. And I'm just making three more copies. And then we're going to want to get rid of, or we're actually just going to edit out what we need for each particular letter. So follow along here. It's going to make sense, but just do exactly what I'm doing by get, getting rid of certain letters on certain copies. And then once those letters are deleted, I'm just using the move tool and I will be moving these back into place. And now I want to make more duplicates of what we just created. So I'm just clicking and dragging over those letters. And I'm going to do the same exact thing by holding down Alt, Option, and dragging. Now I'm just going to change the colors by going to the swatch panel. And if for reason, any reason it's not over to the right, just go up to the Windows panel. And you'll see the drop down. And you can go ahead and just click on Swatches. And from there, in Swatches, I'm just changing it to a gray. And now I'm basically aligning that top layer with the bottom layer. And I want them perfectly aligned so that we can attach a clipping mask. And what I did is use the align tool so that they're nice and perfect. But before we use that clipping mask, we're going to reposition that top piece of type by using the move tool and just the arrow keys. So to follow along perfectly, hit the bottom arrow key 10 times. And now as you can see, we're creating that 3D effect slash stroke. But now that it's moved down, we're gonna have to move it to the right. So I'm doing the same thing using the right arrow key and hitting it 10 times. And now while I have them both selected, I'm going to object and on the drop down, I'm going to clipping mask. And then on clipping mask, I'm going to make. However, if you wanna use the hot key, you can go ahead and hit control seven. I don't know if I mentioned it, but both of those pieces of type need to be selected. Now I'm basically doing the same exact thing for the rest of these letters. So on this H, I'm gonna go ahead and use the align tool and have that white 
a line on top of the gray. But on that top layer, I'm gonna be using the move tool. However, it's only gonna be moved down 10 times, just downward. We're not moving it to the left or right. And then I'm going back up to object, clipping mask, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit make. Otherwise, just use the hotkey. And then the same thing over here, using that align tool. And then on that top layer, just using the arrow keys, dropping it down 10 times, and then to the left 10 times. And then while both are selected now, I went over to the clipping mask, hit make, and now it's masked. Now we're gonna make kind of like an auxiliary duplicate. So I went back up to that top logo, hitting Alt and Option and just dragging it to the right because we'll use that in the near future. And now we're just gonna go ahead and reposition and put those pieces of type that we just made on top of that original logo. And now I'm just zooming in with Command Plus and then we're gonna be physically moving these into place. I'm just doing the same thing with that H. Just zooming in to make sure that it's properly put placed. And then the same thing with the last few letters, the in. Just moving it into place using Command Plus to zoom in and out. So that duplicate that I, that I made and put to the right, I'm just gonna make another duplicate, Alt Option Drag, and I'm dragging that down below what we just made. And then once again, I'm making a set of three using the duplication method. And now this is gonna look familiar because we just did this, but we're getting rid of certain letters exactly the same way we did before. And now once again, I've, I have everything that we just made completely selected and I'm using all option and dragging down again. And then I just wanna have a different color on that bottom set. So I just went to swatches and hit swatches while everything was selected and the orange should work for this particular situation. And then once again, going to the properties panel, I'll use the align tool and then I'm just aligning everything so that it lines up perfectly. And now it's a little redundant, but this time we're gonna actually use the arrow key and hit the arrow key 20 times down and then 20 times to the right. So we're just basically doubling what we did on that last set of layers. So make sure that this set has 20 pushes of the arrow key. I have both of those pieces of type selected. I'm gonna to go to clipping mask, hit make, or feel free to hit control seven for the hotkey. Now all I'm doing is bringing that set of type to the front. So I'm just gonna right click and bring to front. And now as you can see, we can just go ahead and place it to where we need it and it's in front of the original logo. And now we're basically rinsing and repeating doing the same exact thing. So here, just go ahead and make sure both of those letter your H's are selected. Use the align tool, align them, and then on this H we're going to be using the arrow key to drop it down 20 times. So just hit that arrow key 20 times. And then going to the clipping mask to make and making that clipping mask or control 7 for the hotkey. And then the same exact thing with those last few letters, except this time we're bringing it down 20 times using the arrow key and then to the left 20 times. Now selecting both the front and back pieces of type, I'm going to do that clipping mask one more time or hit control seven for the hotkey. Now I just want to align everything again, so I'm bringing these up, but moving them to the front. So I'm going to right click on what we just made and then move to front, or bring to front. Now, as you can see, all of these pieces of type are their own separate little entities, but what we wanna do is group them all together so that we have one piece of logo to work with. So all I'm gonna do is select them all with my selection tool. And now you can just go up to object, 
and go down to group or feel free to use control G for the hotkey. All right, y'all, I forgot to do this, but I need a little favor. If you could please just hit that like button so that you can help the algorithm and help this channel grow, that would be great. Thank you. And now on that logo to the right, our little auxiliary logo, I'm just making another duplication, hitting Alt Option and dragging that down below what we just created. And now we can create our own gradient so that it's perfect for this particular situation. And to do that, just go to the Shape tool and then we're gonna make a square. And then you'll see a really, really tiny gradient down below the color selection on the left. So hit Gradient and that'll bring up our gradient panel. So the first thing you can do is double click on that left circle. And I'm double clicking on that right one. Actually on both of those circles, I'm just turning it into a gray. And we need to add one more color. To do that, we're just going to use, bring your cursor up and click. And so all you do is just click on that bottom of the gradient and you'll have a new opportunity to add a color. And then I'm gonna double click on that newly created color and just make it a black. And now while I'm clicked on the diamond, I'm just going to change the location. So you'll see the drop down for location. And I'm just gonna make the location at 60%. Now I wanna put that gradient into our swatches. So making sure that I'm still selected on that square gradient, I'm gonna go to swatches and then on swatches, I'm gonna go to the little plus icon and hit that. And that's gonna bring up a new swatch and we can call that new gradient or whatever you wanna call it and then just hit okay. Now the thing is, is we wanna add the gradient to the new text, but if we were to go to, if we were to click on that piece of text and then just go to swatches and pick the gradient, it's not gonna do anything. And then the same thing, if you were to go to the left and pick a new color from the color picker and think that it's going to apply it to the type, well, it's just not gonna work right now. So all we gotta do to fix this little problem is go up to your properties panel and make sure that we get, a, get rid of both the fill and the stroke. So you're gonna wanna go to fill and then you'll see the, you'll see the red line going through white and that's gonna indicate that it's getting rid of the fill. So yeah, now that your fill and stroke is gone, we can go ahead to appearance. But if your appearance panel isn't available, go to the Windows panel and you'll definitely see it there. So you can just go to the drop down and go to appearance. And then on that appearance panel, you'll see a square icon for fill and you're just gonna wanna click that. And then on the little drop down arrow, we can make it whatever color we want. And I just wanna do this to show you kinda how it works. Cause then you can go to the stroke and on the stroke you can pick a different color and that'll bring an outline up. And now I have like this aqua, turquoisey green and then just a orange outline stroke just to kind of show you that that's how it's going to work but for this particular logo we're going to have to switch it but we're going to just have to switch our fill to a black and we're going to use our gradient on the fill so go ahead and select our gradient that we created but the only problem is we need the gradient going in a different direction so it needs to be more of a top to bottom gradient. And that's really easy because we're just gonna change the degree of the gradient using the degree selector. And you'll see that 90 degrees is gonna be perfect and that's exactly what we're looking for. And now what we're gonna do is add that arc to both of them at the same, at the same time. So I have both pieces of type selected and I'm just gonna go up to effects and then on warp, I'm gonna go to arc upper now we're in arc upper and then on arc upper you can change the bend to 25 percent and make sure that horizontal is selected and then leave your distortion at zero percent and then hit okay and now on that bottom layer or that i mean that bottom logo with the gradient we're going to go to effect and then we're going to go to distort and transform and then on transform, we're gonna go to copies and on copies, we're gonna type in 200. And then on the scale, you'll see the horizontal scale. We're gonna put that at 97%. And on the vertical scale, we're gonna do 95%. And then on the move scale, we're gonna change that vertical to 17 pixels. 
and then just leave the horizontal at zero pixels. And once you have all that, just hit OK. And now you can see we have that final effect. And all we have to do now is properly position it. So I'm basically just using the align tool to have it aligned, but it still needs to be tweaked. And all we're going to do is just nudge it. So using that front layer or the front part of the logo, I'm going to make sure that that's selected. So I'm just using the arrow keys and just dropping that down until I feel like it's in a good spot. And one of the things that you really need to do at this point is make sure that everything is grouped together. So I'm selecting all and then I'm going to group it. And the hot key is just control G. Now you can get rid of all the stuff you don't need. Go back to the logo, make it the size you want. And then if you really wanted to, you could drop this into Photoshop and make an amazing alternative movie poster. But I definitely want to give a shout out to Tracy Ching. Go to her website, check out some of her works. And sometimes you can buy her prints. And if you can, I highly recommend that. And I highly recommend that if you learn something from this channel that you just hit that like button and look out for future videos. Thanks y'all for watching. I'll see you on the next one.